Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventures Podcast. I'm continuing my Web 2 and 3 product and code content this year on this podcast. And today we're going to be diving into a, uh, on the product side, we're going to talk about these LLMs and how to use OpenAI's APIs to fine tune your own model. Um, just a quick introduction into where and how you can go about doing that. And then on the, on the code side, we're going to dive into some, some more practical HTML. Um, if you're listening to this, I, I'm doing this as a screencast, so you should be able to just click on the link in the show notes to get to the video. And if you're watching the video, you can always you know, pop this on your podcast player. You can just search for ventures and you should be able to find it. So diving in here, OpenAI, there's so many different apps that have used uh, Open A- OpenAI's APIs to uh, build their thing from, from your, your, your AI avatar platforms to your, your text to, to, to X, like text to image, text to video, text to uh, code, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're a product manager, I'd highly recommend coming through here on, the, on Open, A- Open AP, uh, AI's API docs and just start reading through this content. Um, it, it's really, really important to understand because every product in the next couple of years is going to have an LLM component to it. And it, everyone's going to expect a chatbot when, as soon as they come to your, your site. Chatbots were really popular five, six, seven years ago. Uh, but now with LLMs, everyone just expects something like ChatGPT to be available when they're using your thing. So this is going to be important for you. And maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have an, an idea for an LLM in, in your specific niche uh, market you know, expertise that you have. So this would be a way for you to go about doing that. But anyway, if you go to the, I'll put this link in the show notes here, but the fine tuning of a specific model you can go ahead and do this yourself. You can read through this and you can, they, they give you base models, Da Vinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada to, to go ahead and start training your own uh, model yourself for whatever your particular use case is. So for you as a product person, you know, if, if you're more technical, you might be able to jump in here and start preparing your trading data yourself. Um, but if you, you want to bring your, your, your CTO to the game here, uh, I'd highly recommend having you, your CTO, start building uh, and training your own models, and just on the command line here to get to to see if you can you can create a, a minimum viable product or at least a quick little prototype for how for your own startup or for you know for an idea that you're working on, you might be able to get here. So I'd I'd really recommend uh, reading this whole API reference, how to, how to do your models and then the images and the fine tunes, and then how to, how to specifically work with, with text and code and images uh, in, the, in the way that they have this here with, with open a, API, uh, with open AI's uh, APIs, because this is the future. We are gonna see a lot more of this. And if you're curious about how it happens under the hood, this is the way to do it. So highly recommend giving this a read and, you know, watching any YouTube videos or anything about this to, in order to learn more. All right. So switching over to the code part of the program, uh, if you're following along, you've, you've gotten this far in our little, uh, example rails app, um, in order to, to have a quick little hello, hello, will, or, you know, put, uh, just put a name in from our, from our controller here. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm, I'm basically saying I, I really cannot recommend this w3schools.com enough when you're learning the basics. They have uh, so many things for you to learn. I don't need to re- reinvent this wheel. However, I am going to just go ahead and start copying and pasting some of this stuff in here. We talked about doc type below. Uh, if I just type in these three heading types, right, we already have the hello one here, but if I type in these three headings and then refresh, You'll see how there's, you know, my hello one before. This is heading one, this is heading two, and heading three. If you notice how these get smaller, that's what this H1, H2, H3 tag is. And, and so you can, you know, you can see how you can play around for, with that. If we wanted to pop in another couple paragraphs, we could do so like this. Again, refresh, and you'll see these paragraphs are just in the normal text. Um, the, the default typeface is usually something like Times New Roman or something with serifs. Serifs are these little, 
these little like little squiggles on the end. If, if you zoom in here, it's little squiggles here. Those are called serifs. Um, you could do a sans serif font. We'll do that at some point later, but um, that's what it looks like to copy in some paragraph text. Hopefully you can just do this yourself. Ah, so links, this is how I link to something else. I can go ahead and pop it in here and it adds a link. Normal, this is the normal setting. Again, you click on it, you go to the W3 schools, go back and see, there it is. Um, let's go ahead and pop in an image. Now I'm gonna just copy, this is probably, this is not gonna work and I'll tell you why here in a second. But if I copy and paste this in, this image, and uh, attempt to uh, refresh the page. See how it just, it just it's, it's like a broken link. You've probably been to a website that has a broken link. The reason why that's a broken link is because the source is looking for somewhere in my, in my local host, my, my, my application, my public directory of this Rails app for a w3schools.jpg. That doesn't exist. It's also setting the width and the height here. That doesn't exist, so we're gonna to have to go out and get one of our own. I just pulled up a, a, an image of a rabbit here. We can, we can go over to this domestic rabbit um, uh, on, on Wikipedia. It's a JPEG file, so you can copy the JPEG file here uh, and just type it in. See how it just put in the entire URL? I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this other stuff. You can close an image tag. It's good practice to go ahead and put close. Let's close it like that. And then we can refresh our page. And then, uh, oh, why did that not work? Oh, probably because it's HTTPS. Okay. So that's interesting. We have, we're, we're, on, we're on HTTP, and then there's, there's a secure image here that didn't load that in. But whenever we come to this, in the, into problems like this, you can always just double check that it loads the image. Oh, I see what happened. We need to we need to um, copy the image address. Just like oh, so it's the upload, and then we can do like this. We were we were we were one uh, level too high, and we we loaded the image of the uh, of the. Um, of the URL to the actual web page and not the image to the source of the image. So now we have a huge bunny, and now we could do something like height equals 100. And then hopefully that gives us, yeah, see now that's just 100 pixels. And it, it automatically does the width to, to accordingly from there. And that de defaults to pixels. So we'll learn a lot more how to change the attributes and things like that. I'm glad to be able to just live code with you and see, ah, what the heck, why didn't that image load? Ah, it's because we accidentally loaded in the uh, URL to the web page, not the URL to the actual image file. And now that we see the upload.wikimedia.org, we can see that we did the right, right image here. So anyway, there'll be a lot more of this as we go, and you obviously you can play around, and we'll get more into CSS and JavaScript. But for now, I think it's a good place to stop. I uh, hope you're having a great time following along with this product and code series. Uh, definitely hit me up if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your week. Cheers, y'all. All right, a couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe and you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it'd be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.